Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you, Richard. First of all, my great congratulations to all of the winners of tonight's Global Goal Award. It is very clear that from the presentations that we've seen already that they're an inspiration to us all. And it's truly admirable how they dedicate, even at that young age, already their lives to make a positive difference and obviously inspire others to do the same. I certainly applaud their commitments and I'm honored to share this evening with you. We all have a common vision, a common dream, and a common ambition to create a different kind of world by 2030, a world with no poverty, no inequality, no suffering. And equality for men and women is a prerequisite, just as much as it is an outcome if we want to achieve this world for all of us. Gender equality is actually one of the most powerful enablers for economic growth as well as human development. When we empower women, society and the economy benefits, grows, and thrives. We need to give them the tools to grow their own businesses, which in turn help them to grow again as well. So every woman can create the kind of life that we wish everybody to have, giving them the right skills, rights, and opportunities. Now the winner of tonight's Innovation Award has truly captivated this spirit in her work. She's an exceptional leader with a strong vision on how to empower women. She has overcome enormous barriers, teaching herself to read and write as of the age of 16, speaks seven languages, has learned decoding in about two years' time, grew up in Senegal. She's a pioneer by founding I Am The Code, a movement that teaches over a million women, that is the number, over a million women and girls to code by 2030. She, in my opinion, is a true goalkeeper. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Innovation Award winner, Mariam Jamé. Violet Davis um, at the Oscars. <laughs> Good. I came so far. Oh dear. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. You're one of my heroes. I love your work and the way you're empowering women around the world. Thank you, UNICEF, for. Uh, awarding me this, uh, this award is really amazing. It's not for me, it's for all the girls around Senegal, Burkina Faso, Kinshasa, Argentina, and China. Thank you, Melinda Gate, for all the work you do around STEM education around the world. Thank you, Amina Mohammed, my hero. Uh, thank you, Will I Am, my hero. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you, my friend that supported me all these years in hard and good times. Thank you, my mentors and my supporters. Thank you to Richard and Kate Garvey that are making the global goals so famous. Kate Garvey is one of my heroes. She's my, my very good friend, a young global leader from the World Economic Forum. Thank you, Kate, for everything you're doing for all of us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks another beginning in my life, and I'm certain it's not going to be the same again. My heart is full of gratitude for all of you. In 1970s, 1980s, I would never believe that I would be here standing next to you and receiving this award. Again, thank you, UNICEF, for doing this for me. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable guests, I stand here as a testimony to the fact that being poor 
being uneducated, being marginalized, neglected, and trafficked as a young girl should not be a barrier to fulfillment and purposeful, successful life. Learning how to code unlocked that for me. I'm Senegalese, British, a mother, a coder, an entrepreneur, a transformer, and today a goalkeeper. When I arrived in the UK, I started out doing cleaning jobs, working in hotels and bars. I couldn't speak English. I working for elderly people. I remember working in the southeast of England, in Surrey and Guildford. I was the only black woman on the street. But what I, what, I, what I did realize, I didn't have any skills. I learned how to code in my back kitchen at my local Starbucks and at my local library where I felt safe. And I learned how to code seven languages in two years. <laughs> what I did then, I sat at the library because I realized when I, I used to go to the Guildford College and asking them to give me a job. They said to me, you don't have, you don't have any diploma so we can't give any jobs. And I started at the library, at the local library, all the time learning. And, and I had a, I've got a photographic memory. I used to read and write all the time. And I said, okay, I'm going to learn myself. I'm going to learn how to code. Coding is a 21st century, uh, century uh, skills. And, uh, you know, will I am always talk about this. Young women need to learn how to code. I was chairing the Sustainable Development Goals in the last couple of days at the World Economic Forum where we talked about the future skills. But you have so many young women today in refugee centers, in detention centers in Europe, in, in refugee camps in, in Kenya, or you, know, you name it. People that don't have any skills. Who's gonna build our road tomorrow? Who's gonna build our websites? Who's gonna create our e-commerce sites? How are we gonna forget these women and young girls growing up? What are we gonna do? They're, gonna not, they're not gonna end up like Mariam Jha. Today, I'm privileged, I'm in the UK, where I find safe heaven. But these people don't have any heaven. seven. So if you want to make a difference in the life of these people, we need to start giving them skills, dignity, and pride. We also need to help them break the code in the digital world. I love technology. It gave me freedom. It made me relevant, employable. When most of my friends come from Harvard, Cambridge, Oxford, <laughs> I had nothing on my name. But I'm passing this today to my mentees across the world, Aisha in Senegal, Feng Feng in China, Victor in Argentina. Our movement, I Am The Code, has reached 7,000 people in under a year, from Uganda to China including Japan. We're now in 50 countries. I'm going next week in Senegal to get the girls graduated. And then I'm gonna go to Brazil to launch I Am The Code. We are going global, educating young girls, marginalized girls, people that we have forgotten because we have forgotten them. We have forgotten those girls, but I have not forgotten them. This award means so much to me because if you ask me in the 1980s, 1990s, I'm gonna, sit, I'm gonna be sitting next to Amina Mohammed, sitting down next to Melinda Gates. Those were names I used to hear. Belinda Gates, I used to hear. I used to hear Kofi Annan. I used to hear names. I never knew that I will sit next to them today in 2017. I'm so committed to the global goals because I truly believe I can reach, teach, and enable one million women and girls coders by 2030. I know this, I know this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am tracking progress. I'm making sure government, the private sector, the philanthropic foundations, 
I'm tracking them. I'm, I'm, I'm get, making sure they're accountable. By 2030, they can show me what's happening with women and girls through data. Because you know what? I am data. I am data. I am absolute data. <laughs> of course, I cannot do this alone. No one can do this alone. I need, we all need partnerships, more partnership. But above all, we need empathy, compassion, kindness, commitment, and support. That's the essence of the goal number 17. Let's achieve the global goals together, ladies and gentlemen. There are millions of forgotten girls around the world. They're watching us tonight because we are the privileged people. We are the people with money. We are the people with connections. We are the people with power. I know this because I was one of them. I was growing up in Senegal, in Kaulak, in villages, in orphanages where I have no one saying, Mariam, are you okay? Today, I am okay. I'm using my influence, my power as a woman in tech to go and teach girls how to code. <laughs> Finally, ladies and gentlemen, before I go, I would like to tell you that those girls, each of them, Aisha, need a chance in life. She need an opportunity, a dream, a knowledge that everything will be okay. In this 2017, as Richard just said earlier, no girl or boy should be left behind. Not in our lifetime, not under our watch. To me, that's the, go that's the essence of the global goals. I'm a goalkeeper. I'm gonna keep keeping the goals and I'm gonna be accountable to you. I'm gonna come back next year and tell you what my girls are doing. How many languages have they coded? Have they coded HTML? Have they coded Python? Have they coded Ruby? What can they do? Have they learned mathematics and science? I'm gonna come back and tell you what the, my girls have done in Senegal, in Uganda, in Kinshasa, in Buenos Aires. To me, that's what the global goals are. Thank you so much for having me here. This is an amazing honor for me, and this is for my girls. Thank you.